The film begins with our protagonist, Ben, reaching a client's residence to carry out his professional duties. In the midst of his work, he receives a phone call from his former spouse, and she informs him that he may not be able to meet his adolescent daughter, Olivia, for another week. It's been quite some time since Ben last saw Olivia, and she hasn't been answering his calls either. This has led him to fear that his daughter no longer harbors any affection for him, and his ex-wife proposes a solution, and if Ben can drop Olivia off at school on Friday, she can bring Olivia over on Thursday before she departs. Ben consents to this arrangement, and the following day after completing his work, Ben's ex-wife brings Olivia over, and Ben is thrilled at the prospect of spending time with his daughter and plans an enjoyable evening. However, his attempts to engage with her are largely met with indifference, and he tries to establish a bond by reminiscing about her childhood and recalling cherished memories, but Olivia shows little interest. The subsequent morning, Ben drives Olivia to school, and he requests her to be ready 15 minutes earlier than usual so they can join his brother Mike for a fishing trip. This was a long-standing family custom, and Ben hopes that participating in it will help reconnect with Olivia. Once school was over, Ben heads to pick Olivia up, but she was delayed by 15 minutes, and he notices her in the company of a boy, but when he questions her about it, she assures him that they're just friends. They then set off to a local lake where they meet up with Mike, Ben's brother, and his daughter, and Ben and Olivia proceed to the river for a fishing adventure, while Mike and his daughter prepare the camp for the night. During their fishing trip, Ben and Olivia finally have a chance to converse, and Olivia confesses that her recent aloofness is due to her parents' divorce. She's actually more upset with her mother, who she feels moved on too quickly, while Ben was still trying to mend the broken relationship. Seeing her father in pain saddens Olivia. Ben reassures her, expressing that she's the only one he needs in his life, and they share a warm hug before heading back to the campsite with their dinner. The two families spend a wonderful night around the campfire, sharing stories, and later in the night a strange noise from outside wakes Ben. He steps out of his tent to investigate, but suddenly everything turns black. The next scene shows Ben on the operating table, and he tries to speak to a woman he sees, but she sedates him, and when he wakes up later, he finds multiple women performing surgery on him. Overwhelmed by weakness, he falls asleep again, and the following day, Ben regains consciousness and finds himself in the company of a single man, and he questions the man about his current situation and the whereabouts of his daughter, and the man who introduces himself as Uzik reveals that they're on a planet named Satira, located trillions of miles away from Earth. Ben is initially bewildered and suspects a prank, but Uzik clarifies that Ben has been chosen to represent Earth. Usyk explains that he will act as Ben's advocate and assist him in his preparation. Ella, the woman Ben first encountered, had also agreed to support him in his upcoming trial. Usyk and his team train Ben and emphasize the importance of honesty during his interaction with the council, and Ben is then rushed into the courtroom where he is questioned about human familial relationships. He shares details about his daughter and his strained relationship with his ex-wife, and when the council inquires if such situations are common on Earth, he affirms that they are. They further ask him about his own parents, to which he responds that they were not dysfunctional, but reveals that they passed away when he was only 16. He admits that he still experiences pain from their loss, which piques the council's interest. They question him about the prevalence of such emotions among other humans, and he confirms that it's common. They further probe him about whether emotions can lead individuals to lose control and engage in harmful actions, to which he also affirms. They also inquire about the ways in which people harm each other, and Ben responds to all the questions honestly, but it appears that his answers are aiding the council's argument. In the quiet of the night, Ella pays a visit to Ben in his quarters. She inquires about his parents, and he discloses to her that they tragically lost their lives in a car mishap. A compassionate neighbor took him and Mike under their wing, but Ben was determined to be self-reliant, so he left school and embarked on a working journey. He crossed paths with his ex-wife and was instantly smitten, but a year into their relationship, she became pregnant with Olivia. Despite his financial struggles, Ben was resolved to provide for his daughter, so he redoubled his efforts to sustain his family. His existence was brimming with affection during the time he shared with his wife and daughter, but one fateful day, his wife walked out on him. 
Ben has been grappling with depression, and just when he was beginning to re-establish his bond with his daughter, he was abruptly taken away. Ella was moved by his narrative, and as he drifts off to sleep, she implants a device in his mind that enables him to communicate with his deceased parents in his dreams. His dream is incredibly vivid, and we witness Ben cherishing a final moment with his folks. The following day, Ben awakens on an isolated island, and Ella informs him that he will reside on this nature-enveloped island until he presents his case to the council, which is scheduled to occur in two days. She believes that the serene environment will foster clarity of mind, enabling him to effectively present his case and potentially save Earth. Ella spends the entire day with him, engaging in various enjoyable activities and learning more about each other. Ella gains insight into Ben's relationship with his daughter, while Ben acquires knowledge about the universe. While Ben was asleep, Ella places a virtual reality ring on him, and he awakens in a highly realistic VR world. Ella explains that she brought him to this place because it's the only location where they can experience absolute freedom. She has a crucial revelation to share with him, and she begins by elucidating why VR technology is prohibited. She explains that when VR tech was initially invented, people began to neglect their real lives, immersing themselves in the VR world instead. The government perceived this as a threat and consequently banned it, and Ella unveils to him that their species shared many similarities with humans, and they underwent the same revolutionary process and exhibited the same behaviors. They experienced war, famine, and racism and slavery, but they recognized the determinal nature of these practices early on and put an end to them which facilitated their rapid advancement. However, their insatiable desire for progress and fear of conflict led them down a darker path, and they hypothesized that emotions were the root cause of the malevolent behavior, so they eradicated them using AI. As a result, they no longer experience any emotions, including love and hate. Ella confides in Ben, revealing that she's experienced an emotion for the first time, and despite having studied humans for a century, it is her recent interaction with Ben that have opened her eyes to the beauty of emotions. This newfound understanding prompts her to share this information with him, and the climatic day of Ben's trial has finally dawned, and he is prepared to argue his case before the council. Dressed in his Earth attire, he commences his address by humbly stating that he's just an ordinary individual, and he proceeds to discuss the dual nature of human emotions, their potential for destruction, but also their role as the cornerstone of humanity's strength. He speaks passionately about love, compassion, and kindness, asserting that these are the elements that complete the human experience, and to strip them away would be to rob humans of their very essence. He boldly questions the Council's ethical principles, reminding them of how they've abducted him from his family without his agreement, and he highlights the irony in their actions, pointing out that despite their claims of superiority over humans, they've infringed upon fundamental human rights. He concludes his speech by advocating for humanity, arguing that they deserve an opportunity to chart their own course and carve out their own destiny. Following a day of deliberation, the council resolves not to meddle in Earth's affair, and Ben is overjoyed at the decision and looks forward to reuniting with his daughter. However, his joy is short-lived when Ella delivers some distressing news, and she reveals that since the aliens have decided not to interfere with Earth, he will not be returning. The knowledge of alien existence could disrupt the natural progression of human tech advancement, so Ben is forbidden from going back. This revelation leaves Ben shocked and angry at Ella, accusing her of manipulation and refusing to listen to her explanation. In the ensuing days, Ben confines himself to his room and his health begins to decline, and Ella conducts medical tests on him which reveal no physical illness. She soon realizes that what is truly ailing him is his heartbreaking knowledge that he will never see his daughter again. Witnessing his suffering deeply affects Ella, and one night, she secretly enters Ben's room and wakes him up, and she informs him that he will be returning to Earth, and together, they stealthily exit the building and board a spaceship. Ella then transports him to the planet Perso, risking her own life and defecting from her home planet to enable him to return to his family. Upon their arrival, they meet with the governor of Perso and Yodi, and the governor expresses his gratitude to Ben for enlightening their people, and Yodi thanks him for instilling hope. 
Ella and Ben then continue the journey to a nearby interstellar ship and they share a heartfelt goodbye and a final kiss before Ben is placed in a cryogenic sleep and he awakens at the exact location where he was abducted. Two months pass since his abduction and the area is blanketed in snow and he manages to navigate his way to the main road and reunite with Mike and Olivia. Shortly thereafter, he recounts his extraordinary experiences but only Olivia believes him and Mike assumes that Ben had simply disappeared and suggests he seeks therapy. However, Olivia firmly believes his story and she reassures him that she knows he would never willingly abandon her and their bond as father and daughter strengthens. Olivia decides to spend more time with her father and in the following days, they enjoy some quality time together, strengthening their bond. One day, while doing laundry, Ben discovers the VR ring in his jeans. He contemplates wearing it, but ultimately decides against it. However, after a couple of days, he puts on the ring and is teleported to the VR world where Ella had been patiently waiting for him. The movie concludes with a heartwarming scene of the couple running toward each other and embracing, and this is where the movie ends.